so then to get your free gift here, um, all you have to do is just mention my name in a Google review, and then you can email it then to me at Walter Cullinan, Walter Cullinan at the Tefl Institute.com. So I can put that in the chat here now for you. So um, and when you mention me there, you'll get a free lesson pack, lesson pack with different guides uh, and different lesson plans then as well. So um, feel free to, to get that whenever you want. So I'll put that in the chat. Okay. I can mention Olivia as well. She, she organizes as well. So, um, right. So when you're applying for jobs in Thailand, there's a few requirements that you'll need. So most, most jobs will require you to have a bachelor's degree, um, be a native English speaker, have a passport then from a native English speaking country. So the U S Canada, the UK, Ireland, um, Australia, New Zealand. So yeah, they're, they're the main ones there. And I suppose having a TEFL qualification then uh, to help you get a good understanding of what is needed to teach English in Thailand. So yeah, maybe Rib, you could tell us there, uh, which TEFL course did you choose to kickstart your Thailand adventure? Um, I chose the 120 hour accredited uh, TEFL course. I think it's like the most standard one for teaching English as a foreign language. Um, it was very good. I think I completed it in about three or four weeks. Um, I think it has it has literally like everything on there that you kind of need um, to know how to teach English as a foreign language as far as like, you know, even gives a few like sample like lesson plan guides, has a lot of resources on there. Um, yeah, no, it's very good. It uh, made me feel a lot more like confident and at ease to be teaching English over in a foreign country. No, it's very good. Excellent. That's great. That's great. So it equipped you fairly well then. Perfect. And then, so what attracted you then to Thailand as a teaching destination? Was it um, the, I think the, the culture, the food, the I always, yeah. yeah, I think I always wanted to see Thailand. I knew that much. Um, and then I was thinking for a wee while, like, oh, I might do it solo, like, you know, like do a bit of solo traveling. But then I felt like that would be a bit, I don't know, aimless or like I wouldn't really know, you know, where how to find my feet. So mm -hmm. I said, right, you know, I seen Tafel was advertising um, teaching English in Thailand. And I said, um, you know, I could combine doing it solo, but then also like guaranteeing meeting other people over here, which was yeah. exactly the case. Um, like as soon as I landed, you know, there was a group chat of all the Tafel teachers. And like, mm -hmm. it's just, it was so good to meet people like, um, we had an orientation. I met those people there, and then even like the town I'm teaching in here, like there's so many other foreign teachers like teaching English over here. It's mm -hmm. so good to meet friends. Honestly, I, I'm so glad I did this instead of doing the whole like, like aimless kind of solo traveling. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's just so good to find your feet. Um, no, definitely. Um, yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And then I suppose. Um, yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, we can talk about that there. We talk about our program there for a moment. So when you do decide to do um, an internship with us, then you would get um, you get a lot of things included there. So you get the TEFL course, you get a job placement, and you get an orientation there. So maybe you could paint a picture there of the orientation experience with, while you're in Thailand. Yeah. Um, so the orientation in Thailand here lasted like, I think, yeah, it was two or three days in Bangkok. And it was, the orientation was basically all of the English teachers that signed up through TEFL course um, mm -hmm. for training in Bangkok for three days. It was great because you got like loads of sample lesson plans. You actually had to stand up and do like a sample lesson, which at first, like I was so scared to do, but it was so helpful. And not only that, like it was so good because like I met so many people at orientation that I'm still in touch with now and that I've met on like long weekends or, that, you know, I even intend to do a wee bit of traveling with after this. Um, so, yeah, no orientation set me up really well over here. And it was so well organized as well. Like they give you loads of guides. They even help you. They even assist you on how to get up here to this town, like where you'll be teaching in. Um. But yeah, no, it was so good. Everything was explained so clearly. Like it was, yeah, really helpful to, yeah, go to. Exactly. Great, great. No, that's great to hear. And then, so then we'll talk about maybe the cultural aspects then. So obviously 
you're from Ireland and then you went to Thailand then. So that's going to be, there's going to be a lot of cultural differences there and maybe a few culture shocks. So um, yeah, what did you think of uh, the different culture there in Thailand? Yeah, I think people told me before I came over to Thailand, like, oh, there'll be a culture shock, but I didn't really know what they meant. But there definitely, there definitely was a culture shock. Uh, I think the whole, I was told about it before I came here, but I didn't realize how big a thing it was. The whole, like, why? It's called a why. You know, when you say it's like in Ireland, you know, we'd say, oh, like, thanks, cheers over here. Like, you literally, like, oh, you yeah. bow. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. Like, you're thanking someone. And it's the same with the students. Like, it's so weird, like, the amount of respect you have over here as a teacher. Like, the students will walk past you and they're literally like, bow at you. Mm-hmm. So that was a bit weird at first. <laughs> I think the food as well. Um, when I first landed here, I, you know, I was like, oh God, like, cause there actually, there isn't many Western food options, especially not in like rural Thailand where I am. So that was another shock, but I love Thai food now, honest to God. Like when I first landed here, um, I was a bit, you know, I didn't really know, but it's class now. I love it now. Um, yeah, yeah there is some other like traditions, like you, oh, yeah, in the classroom, it's a bit weird. Like you're not allowed to like, step over things like if a student has like bags on the floor or like Mm. stuff on the floor you literally have to step around it because yeah it's deemed disrespectful to step over anything so there's things like that Mm -hmm. um but yeah no and not like you got used to it so quickly do you know what i mean like now i'd be going home and i'd be like <laughs> but yeah, yeah no it's easy to get used to i think yeah that's i think that's a big difference as well like for maybe teachers in ireland and europe and the us maybe as well like the respect that the students have for the teachers there is uh is very refreshing it's so yeah yeah it's, it's great mad. yeah yeah nice that's good and then um yeah then outside outside of work then was there any maybe cultural things or customs outside of work then that took a while to get used to or the weather the heat oh my god (laughs) i'm over here for eight weeks now and like i'm still not used to the weather because like even today like um i'm over here during rainy season so like it is like thunderstorms a lot but not only is it thunderstorms it's also like so humid and hot like the air is so thick so i'm still not used to weather to be honest that's yeah i'm still getting used to that um i think the amount of monks and like how big buddhism really is over here Mm -hmm um that's another thing temples are really cool but you really do have to like cover up like cover your shoulders and all mm-hmm. when you go into it um other culture shocks like i say the food at first i think i should have learned how to use chopsticks before yeah. i come over here that was oh yeah but, um, not many forks yeah, around there. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. don't actually yeah, they don't really use cutlery over here that's okay. another thing yeah. Only chopsticks so uh yeah things like that but again like you get used to it so quickly you know it's it's really not a big day um yeah yeah excellent excellent no that's a a thing to consider there as well you mentioned maybe tattoos and piercings so in asian countries as well there's a bit more of a stigma around tattoos and piercings so if you're teaching you need to cover them up a bit more did you find that yeah yeah i have a tattoo here on my arm i have to i have to cover in school every day it's uh yeah that's another thing so yeah there is a lot of stuff like that like tattoos i had more piercings as well i took them out it was grand like i totally get it but yeah. yeah, it is definitely a different culture over here for sure. Like compared yeah. to like Ireland, England, America. Like it's, mm-hmm. I like it though. I've grown to really like it at first. Like mm-hmm. when I first started teaching in the school, I thought, oh my God, like, I don't know how I'm going to get used to this, but you really do. Like it's, you get used to it very quickly and I've grown to really like it actually, genuinely. It's good. It's great. Yeah, no, that's great. And it's all about, I suppose, embracing that new culture and not trying to yeah. fight, fight too much against it and like, and trying to, you know, get used to it and familiarize yourself with the customs mm-hmm. and everything then. So that's good. Um, excellent. So, yeah. And so with the, could you share then maybe some kind of standout moments, some highlights of your time in, in Thailand so far then? Um, yeah, I think from school, a uh, standout moment would definitely be, I've already spoke about the why, right? So why is that? And then why crew? Crew means teacher in Thai, right? So there was a Y crew day in school, which is literally like two days where like we didn't even have any classes. It was pure just two days of like the students like paying big respect to the teachers. It was mad. Like there was this big ceremony 
where like mm-hmm. all the students like they get they get you know they give the teacher so many gifts that was really mm-hmm. cool like i'm still not used to like the respect you do get as a teacher especially compared to like you know schools in ireland and europe it's very very different yeah. um so that day in school was really cool um outside of school so after orientation i've already spoke about orientation it was for like three days in bangkok there was like two weeks between orientation and the day that i started teaching where like i had some free time so two weeks there i traveled around thailand a wee bit already like i went to krabi aunan a wee bit of bangkok uh the koh Phi islands that was just class oh my god that was unreal for those two weeks and before i started teaching that was really good and then the people you meet over here as well of course Mm -hmm. like uh the thai people and then you know the other english teachers it really is like like i said at the start it's really good it's a really good way to meet other people over here rather than doing the whole solo traveling thing it's a really good way to integrate both you know coming Mm -hmm. over here by yourself and then also meeting other people yeah no it's it's been really good honestly there's been so many moments it's been stand out yeah. definitely excellent that's great and thailand this was known as a land of smiles so you found that then the thai people are very exactly. welcoming towards you and all that so that's that's great to hear as well perfect yeah yes. good good definitely. and then right so we'll have a look we'll have a few more questions there so um yeah so what what advice then i suppose or like for people uh, yeah, people maybe new to Thailand, if they're going to travel to Thailand, what advice would you use? Uh, what advice would you give them if they want to suppose, make the most of their time outside of work then? So you said you traveled a good bit there. Uh, how do you make the most of your time outside of work then? Outside of work. So I am in a wee bit of a rural area in Thailand. So what we do most weekends is there's a group of like eight foreign teachers here. We tend to uh, go to like a neighboring city, which is just like an hour away on the bus. It's class. Like it's, it's got so much in it. So they are anybody, like, anybody no not short. sure about class. So if you're, if you're not from Ireland, class means really good. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. No, it's fine. Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. No, class yeah, is, um, is really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Really so, the, so the islands the islands and the beaches you're saying yeah oh unreal um yeah so yeah leisure time yeah it's good we have some long weekends here like we have bank mm-hmm. holidays over here as well so on long weekends we do t- tend to travel further afield like mm-hmm. go back to bangkok or somewhere else it's class really yeah. good on shorter <laughs> weekends and um, there's uh places like cities close by we'd go there like we might even spend a night there um, mm-hmm. And then, like, when I get home from school, like, like I say, I'm in such a small area of Thailand, but mm-hmm. there's still loads to do, like, even just trying out new places to eat. Like, there's literally, like, food stalls or, like, restaurants in every single corner. So, like, yeah. even just, like, simple thing of trying out a new restaurant with your friends, like, and then yeah. me and my friends tend to do something after school as well, even if it's just, like, going a cycle or you know, there's mm. a lake here. Go to the lake. Um, nice. yeah, it's it's really good. It's really social over here. Like, and then some of the mm-hmm. Thai teachers are um sound as well. They're really nice. So we do yeah. things with them as well. No, it's really good. Excellent, excellent. And how did you find then? Maybe I suppose coming from a first world, like maybe a Western country where I suppose the cost of living and everything is very high. Um, how did you find then the cost of living there and like having money to do activities and all that? living yeah it's mad like people did tell me like oh thailand's you know so Mm. cheap like the cost of living is so low but it's true like even like in school like my lunch would be somewhere from like 20 to 30 baht which is literally 50 cent like 75 cent a -hmm. coffee is like 20 baht that's like i don't even know what that is like 40 cent it's mad it's insane um so yeah no that was really good um but yeah it's it's very different to western countries as well like i've already spoke about like being a teacher over here especially like a foreign language teacher like the respect you get i know i keep saying it but it's it's mad like and it's really nice because the students are just obsessed with you like even i was walking to school um i was walking to school this morning and um like half seven in the morning and like all the students run over to you like teacher teacher like get a <laughs> selfie you know yeah. so it is pretty cool nice nice yeah that's very good that's very good perfect and then maybe then so 
Yeah, so maybe some advice then for people with the Thailand, like so to maybe what should they prepare for? Are there any particular challenges or um, different ways that they can adapt to maybe being a teacher over there in Thailand then as well? So, yeah, any advice there? Yeah, I think biggest piece of advice I could give to anyone that's considering it is just to do it just to book on and do it because I find myself like I was looking at doing this course for a while but I kept like talking myself out of it and you know mm -hmm. getting too anxious to actually do it but honestly just do it I think it's the best thing I, like I've done so far you meet mm -hmm. so many new people here and regarding the teaching like I said at the start I don't have any previous teaching experience like I went to college for three years I studied occupational therapy it's like a healthcare professional job, like it's nothing to do with teaching. Um, so that was the biggest thing for me was, I was like, how am I gonna stand up in front of a class and teach when I've never done that before, you know? I was really scared to do it, it was really daunting, but like the students make it so easy. The help that Tefl gives you makes it so easy. And I think once you're actually there, like it does kind of come naturally to you mm -hmm. and you can gauge it so much better. When you're actually stood at the top of the classroom and you can think right this class level of english is pretty good i can do this with them and you know it does come quite naturally to you when you're stood at the top of the class but honestly i'd say any advice is just to do it and like there is so much support available as well from tefl or the school or whoever but um yeah no it's it's i'm really glad i did it i really am and it's only four and a half months as well like it's not like you're signing up for like a year or two like it's only four and a half months so i think it's yeah it's going so quickly as well like it really is so i'd say yeah. just do it to anyone who's considering yeah, exactly yeah exactly even if you you know the five months ago so fast to be so it's important to make the most of every every moment over there yes yeah, so that's a very good very good message sure. then and then yeah we'll have a few questions there so would anybody like to ask ruby a questioner a question about her experience there um hi it's it's sharon here from south africa cape yeah, town hi, yeah uh yeah um you mentioned you went you you did three years at college i um my question is i went to college i did a teacher's diploma um so I I have spoken with Walter and he's restored my confidence in 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 teaching again as far as the a my age is concerned. Um, I'm older than fifty, so my question would be with my college um, teaching diploma, will will is will that be is that a good thing for me to consider teaching in thailand and my second question would be you mentioned four to five months so are all posts four to five months or and then you have the choice of renewing your contract or will or, or are they like six months contracts or ten months or a year? How how what what periods? Um and and, yeah. and yes, then I have a third question. Um when do the school years start and end? Um and when do these possible four to five months start? Any time of the year or or is it fixed periods from from this month to that month and and only those times that you can uh, um, apply for these uh, posts yeah so i suppose sharon yeah this was an important thing there maybe about the diploma yeah they do prefer to have a bachelor's degree but there might be some ways around it and i'll send you on uh, some more information about that and then maybe mm -hmm. Ruby you could talk about maybe the academic years there so what months do they run from and the possibility of renewing a contract at the end of it uh -huh. um, right. um, sorry it, it cut out for a minute but I think the question was um, what are the months the school years the contract yes. um, so yeah over here in Ireland I know we have summer holidays from like like June, July, August. Over here, it's a wee bit different. 
school so i'm teaching for one semester the school year is divided into two semesters this semester is from may until the end of september that is the first semester of school and then after that the students have as far as i'm aware they have kind of they have october off for a month so you wouldn't teach in october i don't think any schools are open in, in october okay. i don't think don't quote me on that but then the second semester is from like November until November until March. And then they have April off, I think. So they kind of have like two months off over the course of 12 months, but at different stages in the year, as far as I'm aware, I think I've only signed up for one semester. So May until September, um, I think depending on your school I'm not really sure um you can sign on and stay for another semester if I you know if I really wanted to I'm sure that is something I could do I'd have a month off in October and I'd start again in November um but yeah and regarding your teaching I definitely say like if you've got previous teaching experience definitely do it because I don't have previous teaching experience and I'm I'm really enjoying it you know I'd definitely recommend it if if you've got teaching experience, that's a bonus, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah. Anybody else have a question there? Thanks. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, Are we... Al Hi, my name is Tanya. Sorry, I'm I'm having some difficulties with my camera. Um, no But are we, are we allowed to bring our partners with us, even if they aren't teachers, per se? Um, not 100% not sure now, to be honest. Um. I'd say, yeah, it could it could be a possibility. I suppose you'd have to organize your own accommodation um, and then you'd have to be flexible about the location as well. So I suppose there's a list of locations that you could have a look at, but um, it kind of depends. Um, depends, yeah. So we could we could try and like, help you accommodate that, but um, yeah, we, we could let you know um, about that. But I suppose, yeah, just if, they're, if you're flexible about um location and if you're willing to organize your own accommodation then it could be a possibility yeah okay thank you no worries okay and you have some question so guys i have a question as well my name is uh fazil uh, mm -hmm. i'm an esl teacher from mongolia mm -hmm. i've been teaching there a year and a half now i did my tefl from the tefl institute while i was there during mm -hmm. my first year and yeah. so, as you guys know, Mongolia is an extremely harshly cold country. Uh, mm -hmm. We experienced temperatures dropping down to minus 40 this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would rather want to you know, relocate and uh, to, to a more tropical kind of area. I visited Thailand for travel purpose uh, previously. I was in Pattaya and then Bangkok. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I have a master's in economics, a bachelor's degree, and a, a certified chartered accounting degree, which is partly qualified. I have a TEPL certification from the institute, and I've mm -hmm. also given my IELTS as well, qualifying with an eight band. Mm -hmm. So uh, my primary education is from the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, teaching in mm -hmm. Mongolia has been a very live experience. Although I do have a standing offer from there currently as well, mm -hmm. uh, it's just that their immigration takes a little time in processing your invitation letter. So uh, for Thailand, I'd definitely be interested. I've been, uh, you know, uh, throwing out my resume to Vietnam and China, mm -hmm. but China's policies are a little strict in terms of, you know, accommodating uh, individuals from Pakistan. Well, yeah. Although you can end up there, but that's not through a proper channel. So yeah. as far as Thailand goes, uh, why not? You know, uh, in terms of giving back to the community, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's also one of those countries where there's a lot of need for teachers who can assist children with that. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I'm single and uh, for now. And so, you know, you know if, if there are any email addresses or schools where I could, you know, forward my profile to or if the Temple Institute can help with that, you know, I'd, I'd be obliged with that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I suppose the main I suppose the main issue there that I suppose that we, we have there is suppose, um, just in regards to visas and things like that. It's, it's only so much we can do. So I suppose it's much easier to get. Mm -hmm to organize it when you have um, a passport from a native English speaking country. Um, so 
that's the big problem. But if you if you give me a shout via email, I'll I'll give you I'll give you some advice about well what we can help with anyway. But um yeah, yeah, I'd say give me a shout anyway and see what we can do, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh so maybe Tebza there, did you have your hand up? Hello? Oh hi. Um Yes, I think he's talking to me. Are you done? Yeah, you can you can ask Tebs, yeah. Okay. No, I have a question. Um I'm in South Africa and yep. I have a B tech in economics. So I wanted to find out is it okay to apply using a B tech? Because apparently it is equivalent to a degree. Yeah, I'd have to see a picture of it. Um I, I put my email there in the chat. So you can you can message me privately and we can have a chat about it and send me over the documents and things like that. Um, just for personal cases like this, it might be easier just to chat one on one. Um, but yeah, Fanny, but is that okay, Tebsa? Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any more kind of general questions there for Ruby about Thailand? Mm hmm. Yeah, if you want to go, yeah. Hello? Yeah, far away. Sorry. Just checking a bit. Right, it's two things really. The first thing is I'm a bit older than some, so what's the deal with age? And the yeah. other thing is I will hopefully soon be a dual national. So how does mm -hmm. that affect the visa situation? Yeah. So I so if you contact me in that email, I'll send you an alternative to our internship. So it's more of a job placement. So the age limit for that is sixty. So for anybody that's over forty five, uh, we have a job placement there that could be possible. And also, there's a lot of t teaching jobs in Thailand outside of this internship program that you could apply for. And uh, where do you currently have a passport from? Okay, at the moment is the UK one, and I'm sorry, I'm hoping to very soon have one from Ireland as well. So okay, yeah, no, they're they're both good passports. Yeah, exactly. So you could you could uh, definitely get make them move over to Thailand there soon. Then yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, that's good. And then anybody else have a, we'll just take a couple more questions there. Um, if anybody, maybe Jessica Murphy there. Hi, how's it going? Um, you mostly answered my question in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's and a master's and I've also already done the 120 hour and the 30 hour of the TEFL course. Um, mm -hmm. But I've noticed that to do like the, um, this internship thing it's like it's paid i'm sorry no you have to pay to do some, like some of it but since yeah. i've already done the actual course is it still mm -hmm. the same price or would it be cheaper you know it'd be cheaper yeah exactly we can give you a bit of a, yeah yeah we can give you a bit of a discount there yeah as well so yeah what, what what i can do there next is um i'll just put my so basically i can mention that so for anybody I suppose looking to do the internship there, I'll put my Calendly link in the chat so you can book a call with me. Um, and then we can have a chat then about um, different things. So yeah, I can put that there and I'll put also my email address there as well. So for anybody who has specific questions or concerns, they can message me then, okay. Um, okay, any, more, any other questions there for Ruby about Thailand? Thank you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I would, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my name's Kevin. I'm actually from Ireland as well, and I just finished my bachelor's degree. So um, what I actually want to know is, is there any um, is there any negatives or is there any cons that you've experienced while you've been in Thailand for so long? Because as, as you're saying, like, it's a completely different place and a different culture, a different language, you know, different people all together. So inevitably, you're going to have a few, you know, downsides as well as upsides. So I was just wondering, in your experience, uh, what did you uh, find out wasn't as good while you're there? Or any culture um, shops, maybe, yeah. Yeah, cheers, Kevin. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I know I mentioned when I first landed, like, the food. I love Thai food now. I really do. But when I first landed, like, I got bad food poison. <laughs> so that and it's quite common, you know. Uh, so maybe that's one thing, um, food poisoning. I don't know. And then... Also, I have been, I left Ireland like eight weeks ago. It was actually eight weeks ago, like yesterday. So I've been over here for eight weeks and I know there is still quite a while to go, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But, you know, some days you do get homesick and you think, God, oh, you know, I still have a while to go. Um, Anything else? I 
I don't know. I'm lucky that I got placed with, you know, a lot of other um, English teachers. Um, I think maybe depending on the area, there would be less in some areas. And, you know, maybe some people experience a wee bit of loneliness. But again, I think that's only natural, you know. Any negatives? Not really. The teaching is really great, you know. I thought I'd struggle a lot more with it than I have. So, yeah, I honestly, other than, like, being a wee bit homesick, which is quite natural, I think, and the initial food poisoning, that hasn't really been any other uh, negatives, I don't think. Yeah. No, I don't think so, yeah. yeah well, do you think that there's a bit of a, like, have you experienced a really bad uh, language barrier at some point, or have you just gotten yeah. by with English, no problem? Maybe that could be something that you could talk about, Ruby. Maybe, yeah. So all the all the kids obviously speak Thai. So how did you teach them solely through English? Actually, that'd be good. Cheers, Kevin, for that question. Yeah. As well. Yeah, it's a good question. That was something I was concerned about coming here as well, because obviously I don't speak Thai, and a lot and a lot of the kids really don't have much English at all. So I was just I was wondering myself, like, how am I going to do this? Yeah, definitely definitely a problem with the language barrier especially up here in rural thailand because i'm up in like the northeast like not like places like bangkok you know there is quite good english there because it's an international city but up here in rural thailand there's not a lot of english anywhere um i've kind of negated it by learning small bits of thai that's really useful for the classroom um really simple stuff um like, you know, five minutes left, you know, it's quite easy to say in Thai or like things like that. Also, like if and there, I literally just I can put Google Translate up in the projector and say something. And look, most of the time there is at least two or three students in the classroom that have really good English because there's a lot of. So I have like I have like 20 classes in a week and I'd say like the majority of them, I'm lucky enough that the majority of them. Um, are like language classes they've taken language courses before so their English is actually quite good some of the classes do struggle a wee bit more than others but like I say there's at least like one or two students that understand what I'm saying that can then translate for the rest of the class and also um, teaching English as a foreign language here in Thailand like I'm not teaching really complex stuff at all like I'm teaching just like very basic vocabulary which you know when I put corresponding pictures with the vocabulary on the board which makes it easier for the kids to understand so yeah the language barrier can be a wee bit of a problem but I think it is quite easy to negate once you get into the swing of it I think yes very very good yeah and like you have the technology there and the tools there to help you navigate yeah. it as well yeah perfect any other questions for Ruby about Thailand then we'll do one more and then maybe uh, check one Harry yeah yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I have just three very quick questions. Um, first of all, I'm joining from Liverpool, so hello to everyone. Um, first of all, uh, I know you've already touched on this already, Ruby, but the only my biggest worry about this is obviously the social aspect and possibly feeling quite socially isolated. How easy was it for you to maintain contact with the people who you ended up doing your placement with? Um, secondly, um what's the accommodation like and i can't remember my third question it'll probably come to me but yeah thank you yeah um i was really worried about being socially isolated and lonely over here that was one thing like i was really anxious about but uh first of all before you come over here there's already like a group chat which is great because everyone's putting in stuff like you know you know everyone is everyone really wants to meet other people there's not people here like that aren't bothered about making friends like everyone's in the same boat i have found it quite easy to maintain contact with everyone i met at orientation um because of the group chat and you know social media um and then also there are i'm in this small rural town as i've said but then close by to me it's more like outside sorry close by to me um, there are a lot of other foreign teachers in neighboring cities and on weekends we do tend to meet up um, so yeah I don't really think like and you're working 40 hours a week as well and you know you make friends with even like 
the other teachers at school. So that's really good. And then the second question about accommodation, it's actually nice. Um, I, it's like a studio apartment is how I describe it. So like I've got a double bed, my own bathroom, my own shower, my own wee fridge, uh, own TV. It's really nice. Like um, I was a bit worried about that as well. But um, yeah, no, it was really nice. So I like I live in a like an apartment complex, and actually a lot of the other foreign teachers also live in this um apartment. It's something like um, and a watch already explained. Um, the um, they help you with accommodation. They place you in accommodation with other foreign teachers. So that's really good. Um, so yeah, I'd say loneliness is not a lot uh, because there's so many other people here to socialize with keeping in contact with people is easy and the accommodation is genuinely really nice oh uh, no that's very helpful um thank you very much. just that the third question that i forgot was about flights and how how expensive that may have been organizing the flights and how easy it was because i'm i'm not too sure where i would fly from where i'm from i think it'd be london i think but yeah, how, how was your experience just arranging travel and stuff? Yeah, easy enough. Um, I flew with Qatar Airways, um, two flights. I left Dublin, got like a seven, eight hour flight to Doha in Qatar. Had like an hour and a half, two hour layover. Then got my second flight. It was like seven or eight hours again from Doha to Bangkok um yeah just a few days before orientation in bangkok uh the flights were grand yeah 100 percent um i don't know they weren't that expensive uh a couple of hundred i think i only booked flights here i don't have flights home so flights over here were i don't know i think in and around 500 euro um yeah it's not so bad um geez. Did you get any help from, does TEFL provide any sort of guidance on flights at all? Or sort of... Um, yeah, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose we provide a bit of guidance on flights. Um, but yeah, you get, I suppose they're, they're fairly... Once, you, once you're approved and once you have... Once you've gone through the ap application process and we've approved you and everything, you can go ahead and pretty much buy the flights then for for the next date then whenever whenever possible. So yeah, it's it's fairly straightforward anyway. And uh, we'd help you out with the with the visa process and all that. Um, so yeah, that's it then. Um, perfect, no problem, Harry. Yeah, so um, that's it for today then, guys. So like I said, if you've any other questions there, you can book a uh, book a call with me or send me a link. Uh, so send me an email and I'll get back to you. Um, so uh, I'd like to thank Ruby for joining us today and and telling us everything about uh thailand so very very much appreciated um yeah have you anything to say ruby or going? um yeah thank you walter thanks everyone for joining i would genuinely just say to do it um to anyone who's considering it like there are you will talk yourself out of it so i would just do it it's i do not regret it i'm very glad i've come here and it is it is easy to make friends I did not know if it would be, but it really is. The accommodation is nice. Thai people are lovely. TEFL provides a lot of support and help and guidance. Um, and it's so easy to just send an email to anyone in TEFL, like with a direct question and, you know, get back to you. So, yeah, it's all good. I would definitely recommend it 100%. Yeah, great. Thanks a million, Ruby. And thanks, everybody, then, for joining then as well. And uh, like I said, get in touch if you have any other questions then. Okay, cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank Walter. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.